they stop to hit him. <laughs> hey there, uh, Demon Weave. Good to see you. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I would have been fine there if the sword hits had just hit that bat. <laughs> but for some reason, it just didn't cooperate. So I want to get past this because I have some uh, very dumb and big mistakes in the offline run that I'm comparing against. Because since I was just trying to finish a run to have splits to run against, I did some uh, less than optimal things, <laughs> to say the least. I'm just waiting and killing him. I'm not... Okay, well, that bat was annoying. But he didn't kill me. Alright. Hey, we finally made it past that part. Now we're in the generic old school RPG section, you know, the Final Fantasy part. And also, this is the part that looks easy. It, it'll stop looking easy pretty quickly once we get to the crazier parts of the run. Alright, got three slimes. Let's see if we can get any uh, good damage rolls. I'm pretty sure it's just RNG. I don't know. Yeah. In, in chat, uh, have there will know a lot more about this game than I know. Right, we didn't get any good damage rolls, that's unfortunate. Well, that's fine. Oops, didn't mean that. It doesn't matter. Also, I have to be ready to split because I have to actually remember where I set my splits. can't use that, uh, that fancy uh, schmancy auto-splitter, because I'm playing on console. <laughs> have to do everything manually. Alright. Oh, that's faster than my other run. I'll take it. Alright, now we're back to some uh, overworld type movement. That last section in this part with the village. We gotta go buy some items. I also have to get, have to get more comfortable with some of the menuing so I can just like blitz through it. I'm not there yet. I do have experience uh, with, like, trying to take optimal angles with this kind of overworld stuff. With, like, very, very slight diagonals. I know, like, casually this game's pretty cool, actually. Because it's just, like, a bunch of uh, different styles and homages and references and parodies and all that good stuff. I, did, I had some uh, slow entrances on some of the things there. Alright. Got our good, gar good RNG and one shot him. That's not guaranteed. Okay, I don't really need the heal. Okay. Well, I might after this, depending on if I get hit or not. Alright, I didn't get hit. Oh yeah, no, I, It Takes Two is a great game. I love it. 
I played through it with a friend last year, I think, at this point. It was a lot of fun. So like I said, hope you like the menu, because you're going to be seeing it a lot. Yeah, I still have to play uh, Evil Land 2. I'm going to get around to it at some point, but I'm uh, a little preoccupied with the first game right now. Land 2 is a second is the second game and I will not be playing it in the speed run. <laughs> I do not I, I know that run at all, unfortunately. Alright. There we go. Alright, and now the reason why I stored this menu. Uh, when I close out of the menu, it'll just instantly take me out of any animation I'm in. So I can just skip this, uh, chest animation. Looks a little funky, but it saves time. And you're gonna be seeing that a lot from here on out. Also, it's 3D now. So this, if you're, if you didn't notice, this is the area from the first part of the game, but we're going in reverse because we can go different areas now. Get health drops, damage boost to gain a little bit of speed because why not? He was in a good spot for it. All right, well that damage boost was not very helpful. Kind of. For the sequence breaks, kind of. We do skip things that we're supposed to get, for sure. Alright. Nice. Like, this dungeon is not done as intended, I'll say the least. Because <laughs> we will be doing a lot of the menu storage stuff in here. Also, uh, by using menu storage, we uh, duped that key chest, got a second key, and then just overlapped the opening animation so that I didn't have to sit through two of them. Also, hey there, Mike O'Shea. so we can skip another chest animation. Sometime, most of the time it's going to be just for skipping animations, but closing it during a cutscene gives you movement back in general, so sometimes it's just to move a bit more than uh, you'd be able to because you just overlap movement with the cutscene happening, rather than like skipping them outright like that. Because a lot of the cutscenes are like, they don't happen until... 
you stop moving, so, like, you can't just keep walking indefinitely during them or something. Okay. That guy was in the way, but he got out, I was able to squeak past him. <laughs> Which is good, because I actually don't have a lot of health right now. Also, this next menu storage is very important. Don't want to mess this one up. Because this lets us skip an entire combat room. And this combat room is a pain in the ass. <laughs> to say the least. Okay. Also got a free heal. Oops. This guy sucks, I hate him. Or he cooperated, kind of, though. Okay. Now my favorite part, I gotta get through these things. Alright, I didn't mess him up, that's good. I messed that up in my, uh the run I'm comparing against, which was not very good. Alright, these guys are annoying. Hopefully they don't screw me over. Okay. We're good. I'm go up here. Alright, well, that guy's in the way. Alright, and then skip a little animation there. Alright. Don't mess up the path. <laughs> this is one of the paths I don't really mess up, but I uh, still want to be careful because I can mess it up very easily. And then intentionally take a bunch of damage. Hope you like that beeping noise because it's, it's going to be here for a minute. <laughs> chest. And then... Just hope the guy teleports next to me. Okay. Don't worry, that was intentional. Because that spawns us back at the start of the dungeon and we still have the boss key. So we just don't have to do that combat room. We can just go straight to the boss. And this boss is a pain in the ass. Let's hope he cooperates, because his attack patterns are just RNG. And you can only hit him after he charges into the wall. I don't know the actual RNG chances of it ha of these attacks, but I just know that that it's RNG. And so I can do some pause movement here, but I just want to keep the pause screen and not accidentally lose it or something, so I'm not going to mess around with it too much. Alright, and now, important trick. Yes, okay. First try. Okay, so that chest that I skipped right there, 
Uh, you're not supposed to be able to skip that. You're There's, like, a very small window on it that you can just, like, walk through because reasons. Uh, but that chest gives you 3D random encounters, so by skipping it, you just don't get random encounters for the rest of the game. So it's very good. Also, we're in the Final Fantasy VII portion of the game now. Also, yes, pausing the game does essentially make it so you can't take damage and you're, like, immune to overworld stuff. So, using pause, using your pause to just not take damage in that dungeon is a common tactic. Also, I kind of- I have to wait, because I have to wait for her to leave this area first. Uh, because the game will soft lock if I mess that up. And I have done that before. Alright, now for another trick. Let's see if I can get this. This is some dialogue shenanigans as opposed to menu shenanigans. Uh, talk to this guy. And talk to you. Uh, he just has a hanging uh, dialogue box, which we're going to use to do some shenanigans. Assuming I do it correctly. Oh, I forgot to split a while ago. Whoops. That's probably going to happen a bit <laughs> as I get used to uh, doing runs of this. <laughs> I was supposed to split a little while ago. Oh well, it's fine. It sucks though, because that's the split I really wanted to see what my gold was. But yeah, this is the... Uh... Go talk to everybody in the village thing to get one item part of the game. But by doing this stuff with the dialogue boxes... Uh, assuming this works, which I'm pretty sure it should, I get to skip the last one and just warp straight to getting the item after uh, doing this. Yes, okay. So yeah, this, uh, this scene is not supposed to happen this way. I'm supposed to be in a different room. And so by doing this, I just don't have to walk to that room, and I get to skip the last dialogue box as well. And it's going to warp me to the room I'm supposed to be in. So I don't have to walk, and then now I can just go leave. And now we get to do another Zelda area. But this one's going to have some interesting stuff going on, both game mechanics and shenanigans. Uh, because the, the new gimmick, uh, in addition to the fact that we have bombs now, is, once I get over there, we have these time crystals, which will send us between 2D and 3D. And we're gonna have to use that to bypass certain things, but there will still be shenanigans. We just have to go get the bow first, before we can really start doing some shenanigans. Because these blocks here, we can only pass in 3D, because they're like half an inch tall, and you can't go half an inch in the third direction when you're 2D. Alright, and here we have another one of these lava rooms. Uh, hopefully I don't fall in. Uh, I'm gonna play it a little safe at spots to make sure I don't fall in, because having to redo this room is annoying. Bats can absolutely lock you, knock you into the lava, and it's happened to me more than once. Alright. And I get it. And now that I have the bow, I can just go ahead and do that, and then spawn back at the beginning of the room. Alright, now that we have the bow, uh, let the shenanigans begin. Because you can walk during it using the menu stuff, and then it happens as soon as you stop walking. shortly like that take the bow back out shortly because I gotta get past one of these trees all right and then keep the 
the bow out because I don't have to deal with any more bats for a minute. Okay, well. These guys still suck to hit, because all enemies suck to hit with the bow, but that's fine. part, figuring out the best way to utilize the bow here is kind of weird, but that's fine. And I, because I have to do it in a certain way so that I don't accidentally crash the game, because it is very possible to crash here. <laughs> uh, bomb skip went fine, I got it. Maybe it was like a little slow with some of the, some of the movement, but I got the skip, which is important. And then Dark Clink was a pain in the butt. He did not really want to cooperate. But I didn't die, which is fine by me, then. Alright, then more shenanigans. Oops. So skeletons die to one hit from the bow, so I'm going to be using that. And then I can cheese the hell out of the teleporting dudes with bombs and the pause menu, which is really nice. Because dealing with these guys otherwise is annoying. And I also got that pause. Hopefully I can actually see what pace I'm on, because I won't. I'll try not to forget to split this time. Also, having full health here is really good. Because I'm bad at the Diablo section, so having full health will be very nice. Alright, get ready to split. Alright. That's better. Much better pace than last, uh, the run I'm comparing against. Alright, so time for more dialogue shenanigans, but for a different reason. Because this time, we're going to store uh, the old woman's dialogue, because she heals us. And so by storing that, or not the old woman, the nurse, I guess. But we can just store her heal dialogue and just get a free heal wherever we want which will be very helpful in this next section. Oops. Because this next section is a pain. <laughs> I'm still not very good at it. But yeah, this is the Diablo part. I get a free save that I can do wherever I want. And I'll be using that later. Both as, as a way to store more dialogue, and also because it just lets me save right before the boss, which makes the boss free, okay, even if I mess up. But yeah, this section replaces your hearts with like a, an actual like health meter down at the bottom there. Which is very nice because it gives you way more hits, so you don't actually have to worry about fighting anything. Because any run where I don't start with full health once I get the health meter, I am very scared that I'm going to die. <laughs> and then I usually do die. Because getting through these sections when you're, when you're not near full health is uh, not fun. This boss that I'm going to be fighting is very cheesy. Get out of the way. Thank you. Alright, I have less health than I would like, but I should be fine. Do that, and then I... Store some dialogue. And then, 
because this guy's shots can't go through the uh, gravestone here, I can just stand on one side of the gravestone and cheat. So whenever he uses that attack, he just can't hit me. He can still hit me with his melee attack, but that doesn't matter as much as it does this thing. Out of the Diablo's dungeon, which is good. Because that was. That dungeon is annoying. Alright. Go ahead and buy some potions for this fight. I just mache for a while. And then. Get dialogue storage again. <laughs> for a different reason, again. Because now we're gonna go fight not Sephiroth. It's, uh, Zephyros. But yeah, we do this because, uh, we're gonna be able to store the menu by storing the dialogue. And we're gonna want that for later. Alright. Uh, <laughs> in the offline run uh, that I'm comparing against, I accidentally healed him on, like, turn three. Like, I healed the boss by accident. So I had to do like an extra couple turns to do make up the damage. So I'm not going to do that this time. Or at least I'm going to try not to do it. We'll see if it, ha it happens or not. But yeah, we just got to wail on him for a while and then eventually the fight will be over. And, uh, and I just need to keep an eye on everybody's health, which is why I bought potions. And hopefully I don't get atrocious damage rolls. Uh, I say that and then I get six damage, so I'm not going to be lucky. Let's see. These damage rolls are horrid. Okay. Come on! Do double digit damage, please. <laughs> These are really bad. Oh, I'm gonna wanna heal. I'm absolutely going to need a lot of turns this fight, because I'm getting such bad RNG. Alright, there we go, that's better. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to heal one. No heal. Alright, my yellowing paid off, I think, hopefully. Alright, I don't know if it paid off anymore. <laughs> that's fine. God, I thought the fight would have been over by now. I got so bad RNG. Uh, this attack's gonna kill him. Watch. There we go. <laughs> Alright, I didn't screw myself, at least. Because now he uses his uh, super attack that is definitely not named after anything. Completely original attack name. that to wipe the party. And then blah blah blah, you'll we'll never stop. Then he murders uh not Aerith. <laughs> Spoilers by the way, she dies. And I just gotta mash through. And then in true anime fashion, uh the helper character dies so we get a huge power-up. And we could just summon God. <laughs> and God is a dragon. A little insta-kill him. And we can just go on our way. still have our uh, our menu up here, which is good. We'll need that very soon. And 
and then I didn't heal him, so I've saved a lot of time. And then we did that so that I can, uh... <laughs> just leave during this cutscene. Ah, uh, she's... <laughs> She was in the menu because the menu was restored from when she was alive. If I open the menu now, she will not be there. And then we just wait for the cutscene to end now that we're out here. And then take the airship. And now we go fight the final boss. In the run I'm comparing against, I had bad execution and bad, ass bad RNG during this fight. So hopefully it'll be better. <laughs> and now we fight Robot SpongeBob from Battle for Bikini Bottom. Not really, but that's what this fight reminds me of. Mostly just because of the hand phase, which is only phase one. But it's not an inaccurate comparison. I messed that up and hit it once, hit it four, uh, once each cycle, so it took four cycles. And then this last phase is just pure RNG, and we just have to pray that it cooperates. Because this is the Ganon Tennis phase. We just gotta hit his orbs back at him four times, but he only sometimes fires the orbs that we can hit. This is actually really good RNG. And time is coming up shortly. And there we go. That la that final fight went a lot better than <laughs> the previous run. <laughs> All right, and there we have it. Thirty-two forty-six. Up 33. Not bad. My practice runs earlier this week paid off. <laughs> and that run had some pretty not great RNG at the beginning. So that is improvable just from that sense, but also my execution overall can be better. But I didn't have like any major mistakes in there, thankfully. Just uh, some minor ones. to watch the credits, because you can't skip them. <laughs> right, yeah, because at the beginning, uh, with the fights at the beginning where I had to get gold for uh, buying the items, I just didn't get any insta-kills on the, uh, the slimes, which is a shame. But that's not like the end of the world. Uh, against Kefka's ghost, uh, I didn't get good damage rolls. Against Zephyros, I didn't get good damage rolls. I had a bad Dark Link fight because of RNG, but the final fight had really good RNG, so I can't complain there. And then, yeah. And there's other like small RNG points that could be better because in like the Sacred Grove at the end when I'm killing the dudes with the bomb. So they just decided to teleport to the same spot and kill them both with the same bomb. But obviously I can't control that. Oh hey! That's a nice completion. I got 66.6% of the game. Yeah, 
that's a, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that run for my first uh, streamed run of the category. 